Today we are finally going to go through animations, how to move objects from point A to point B, how to rotate them, change their color, set the duration of all of those animations, and also two bonus animations that I have planned for the end of the video. So if you're excited, let's get right into it. Okay, so once we're back in Visual Studio Code, we can go ahead and create our first shape that we want to move across the screen. So let's create a star. We did this also in the last video, so let's continue with that. Star and let's use the default settings for this one. Now let's write it on the screen, that means self play, and let's do actually a create animation for the star itself. And also let's give it a fill opacity, so we can see the middle of it, and the opacity equals, for example, to 0 0.2. Now let's write the star, so we can wait for just a few seconds, and here we go, this is our star. Let's now also do a self.wait command as we're used to. And once we reset our animation, it should all be there now. So what do I want to do with the star? I want to move it from this side over to this one. And in order to do this, we actually need our star to start on the left. So that means let's move it there. Star dot star dot move underscore two. And let's not use coordinates, let's use the actual words that we learned last time. So let's do left, and let's do left times three. Separate this a bit, and when we now play it, it should be moved somewhere over here. Yep, it's there. And now in order to animate this, we are just going to do self, play. You need to select the object that you want to do the animation with, that means our star. Let's do dot, like modify it with animate, because that's what we want to do. And now we want to animate a move to command to, let's say, right and also times three. You might be thinking that right times three will just move us back to the middle, but that is not true. It will actually move us from the starting position over right three. And when we now play it, it will actually start on the left and now move to the right. So that's the basic move to animation that you can use with coordinates or these left to right terms. But let's say that you have already an object on the screen and you don't want to pinpoint the exact coordinate that you have to move it to. You can simply move the object next to that other object. So let's show you how to do that. Let's first and foremost create another object, which will be our square. So square equals, let's do square again, the big one this time. And yeah, empty parentheses again, but uh, let's change the fill opacity as well. Opacity and let's do equals 0 0.3, for example, or 0 0.4. And now let's write it on the screen. That means self dot, let's actually put it before the star and let's copy this command with shift option and up arrow and now instead of star we will just write square and autofill it with vs code and now that we replay it it should just write the square in the middle of the screen because we haven't put in any coordinates for it so in order to move it let's once again create some space and let's do square dot move underscore two couple of parentheses and a couple of these brackets and now let's put our coordinates for example five minus 3.2 and zero. So once we have moved it to it, it will now create our square somewhere down here it should be, yep. And our star will still move over here because we have the move command right there. But let's replace our move command with a simple command called next to. And instead of right times three, let's specify the object that we want it to move to. That means we want to move it to our square. And by default, it's going to just put it to the right of the square. That means when we animate it again, it will just move to the right of the square, but we don't want it there. Let's actually move our square up a bit to something like 2.8. So we have the whole square on the screen and let's specify the side of the square where we want the star to end up on. So let's do up, let's do up, now play and it will generate the square and now move the star above the square. Now I also said we are going to learn how to rotate these objects and this is really simple. Just self play. Now you can do rotate, do a couple of parentheses and in the parentheses you are going to put the object you want to rotate. That means we want to rotate our star. And now we can also customize the angle that our rotation is going to 
rotate in. But just remember that in coding, all of the angles are always calculated in radians. If you don't know what a radiant is, it's basically pi and two pi and things like that. And one pi is equal to 180 degrees. So if I, for example, wanted to rotate the star to 180 degrees, and I didn't know about this radian rule, I would just put in 180. And well, when we play it, it's quickly going to be apparent why this isn't right, because it's going to move there. And now when it rotates, it will just spin sporadically. So instead of doing 180, you can simply put in pi. And now when we play it, it should just rotate 180 degrees, just landing upside down. Okay, another thing that we can do is change the color of our object. And there are multiple ways of doing this, but the simplest one is, again, just doing a self.play command and now specifying the objects that we want to change. So let's change the square this time and now do dot animate dot set underscore color and do a couple of parentheses and specify the color that you want to change it to. So let's change it from white over to purple, for example. And let's do purple E. I don't know how purple E looks like, but let's try it. So let's play the animation and it's now creating it, creating this one, moving it, rotating it, and now it should change color to purple E. This is everything that we end up with. Now let's do a couple of those bonus animations that I mentioned at the beginning, which are super complicated at first, but then you discover it's just one line of code. First and foremost, I will show you the transform animation, which is actually pretty cool. And I can use our star and our square right here. So let's do self, that play again if you're animating something or letting something appear on the screen always use just self dot play this is probably the command you're going to use the most and now do transform and as you can see when we are writing transform there are many transforms that you can use but we are just going to use the default one and first goes the object that is going to get transformed that means let's transform our star and let's transform it into our square so once we have done this, we can play our animation and we can actually first and foremost move our wait command to happen right there. And let's just play it. And now once our whole animation plays out, it should do this, change the color, and now just change itself into the square. And as you can see, it completely matched the square, actually putting it on top of the original one because it's just matched all of the values that the previous square had. So let's say that instead of transforming our star into our square right here, you wanted the star to transform into another square. So they're just piled on top of each other. So this can be done by going into our transform command and now replacing our square with a big square. That means it's going to create a whole new one and just moving it to our star position. This command right here means that it's going to move our new square to the position of the star, but we haven't written the square at all. So it's going to be invisible until the point that the star transforms into that new square. So once we play it, we should see all of our previous animations that we had and now it's going to rotate, change color, and transform into a new square. And now you can just customize this square to whatever you want right in here, or just create another like square, square two equals, and put all of the customization values right here, and then just use it in the command itself. But don't forget the move to part. By the way, if you would have left it without anything, just creating a new square without the move command, it would have just created the square in the middle of the screen, because every object in Manim just begins at the middle. And as you can see, it just transforms into a new square in the middle of the screen. Okay, and the last animation that I want to show you today is going to be something way different that looks way too complicated in order to do manual but this one simple command just changes the game. So let's comment all of this out and let's actually create some circles. So let's do C1 equals circle. Let's do, uh, let's just leave it blank for now and copy this over four times. So we are going to change the color of this to, let's do color and now let's do blue, and now let's actually use blue A. And of course, I should have written this first and then done the copy thing, but I wanted to show you a really cool trick that you can do in Visual Studio Code. Basically, while you're holding down Alt and clicking somewhere, it will create a duplicate of your cursor. And if you want to remove one, you simply click on the one that you had. So now when we start typing, it's just going to type on all of the places that we specified. 
So I can do blue underscore and now I can go into all of these and just type in B, type in C and type in D. And now we have four different circles with four different colors. The second thing we want to do is do a self dot play command and let all of these circles appear at the same time. So we are just going to do create and let's do C1 and let's do a comma. Now copy this whole thing. Another trick that you can do is instead of selecting your whole words with your mouse, you can just hold down shift and now hold down option as well. And it will select a whole word at once. So now we can do control C and do a control V again space, control V again space. And let's do C1, C2, C3 and C4 and let's delete this last comma. Oh, I just noticed that I haven't created like C2 and C3. Yeah, that's kind of a problem and C4. So those are all of our circles. And when we now run our program, it's going to create them all in one place because we haven't specified their locations yet. So let's first and foremost also add to all of these. That means I'm just going to do holding down option or alt and clicking. And now do comma and do fill opacity and let's do equals 0 0.4 or yeah 0 0.4 is pretty good. And now let's arrange them a bit. We are actually going to do this before the self play command and right after it I'm also going to add a little self wait for like three seconds for now. So in order to arrange these, I think we've gone through this in the first video when we went over text, but you can create groups in Manim. So to create a group, you are going to need a name. So circles equals, now do V group and a couple of parentheses. And in these parentheses, you need to put all of the objects that you want to include in the group. So let's do C1, C1, C2, C3 and C4. Those are all of our members of this group. And as you can see, when we play it again, it's still going to write them at the exact same spot right here. A really quick way to just get them next to each other without using all of the next two commands in the world is simply done by doing circles dot arrange and now specifying a direction. So let's do right. And once we play this, oh, I forgot an N right here. And once we play this, it's going to nicely arrange them next to each other. And we can finally see the differences between blue A, blue B, blue C, and blue D. And now we are ready to do the cool animation. So let's decrease our wait time from three seconds over to one again. And let's do actually a four command. We are going to do four underscore and range of we have four members in our circle. So let's do a range of four and now do a self play a couple of parentheses and do cycle and do cyclic replace. So cyclic replace a couple of parentheses once again and type in a star and your group and your group is circles in this case. So let's do circles and it's going to repeat four times. So once we play it, it's going to write all of the circles on the screen at the same time, wait for a second, and now it will start replacing each other in cycles. If you're like me and this overlapping thing really bothers you, you can simply just head over here, do a comma and specify an angle. So we are going to do path underscore arc equals and let's do pi again. This should be 180 degrees, so a really big angle. And once it generates, we can see how that looks like. So yeah, that's pretty much never touching each other. So those are all the animations in Manim that I wanted to show you today. But I want to leave you off with a website that you can find many more examples and many more cool things that you can try on your own. Because it doesn't really make sense to me to go over each and every single one of these commands with you because it's probably going to take more time me explaining it than you just reading the code itself on the website and trying it out for yourself. So. 
I will leave this link over in the description and it's basically the Manim community website where you can find pretty much everything about Manim. Like I've learned a ton of stuff from here. And I highly encourage you that if you want to learn more animations and how to do them on your own, just go into reference manual, animations, click on the first animation and now just scroll through these one after another. So once you find something really cool that you just love to look at, like for example this animation, but you would have liked to learn how to actually do it or customize it a bit, you can just copy the code straight up from the website, just do copy and head over to visual code, maybe comment out the code that you just tried after watching this video and let's just paste this one in. So let's do a couple of lines and now just correct it so it's completely good and once we replay it, it should do the exact same thing as it did on the website. Yep, it's the exact same animation and now when we zoom out a bit, or rather just do a couple of these. Yeah, let's do like this, like I showed you in the last video. So you can now play around with all of the values in here. So this painting time, for example, it's going to be 0 0.5. And I guess it's just how long this line stays on the screen. So what happens if I change it to one, for example? So once I change it to one, it's going to be longer on the screen. And that's a really cool effect that I really like. I think learning like this, actually editing code before creating it on your own is the best way to learn programming in general. At least that is what has worked for me the most. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and I really hope that you just go into Manim full head on and just start practicing getting good at these animations because I feel like this is really a skill that a lot of people want to know how to do. So that has been it. Let me know what you would like to see in the next video and I will see you there. Bye bye.